What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. Today we're going to talk about the E3 conferences. They're pretty much over now. Uh, everything but the PC centric one is pretty much done. We've had Microsoft yesterday. We had EA yesterday. We had Ubisoft yesterday. We had Sony last night. Uh, we had Nintendo this morning. And uh, we finished up with Square Enix. And uh, I think the PC centric uh, E3 show is tonight at 9. So I want to talk to you guys about them. We're going to go through some of the bigger conferences. I'm not going to mention them all. Some of them, to me, uh, don't really deserve their whole section of time. But I, I want to start with Microsoft, some of the ones that really impressed me. Uh, Microsoft came out swinging. Uh, I used to be an adamant uh, person who hated Microsoft when the Xbox One came out uh, because of the vision that they tried to sell. And uh, Phil Spencer slowly, gradually brought me back around and make me to make me see exactly what I was missing and uh, what Microsoft's Xbox could be. And I ended up buying one and um, I, I enjoy it, I appreciate it. And uh, Phil Spencer said this year's E3 is going to be insane. And, and he was right. They were insane. They started off with Halo Guardians. Halo Guardians, uh, they showed a lot of it. They showed a lot of the single player stuff. They showed the paradigm of being Master Chief and, uh, and uh, Spartan Locke. They showed multiplayer. They showed tons of different aspects of Halo. Now, graphically, I won't say that it looked like anything that you would call totally current gen. It looked like something that could possibly be done on the Xbox 360, if you ask me. Uh, but I think it has a lot of meat on it. A lot of people enjoy the Halo franchise. I love the Halo multiplayer world, and I'm looking forward to playing that. So for Microsoft to come out swinging, I already knew it was going to be a hell of a convention. So moving on, Microsoft came out with the announcement of a new IP. And that's one thing that Microsoft needs probably more than anything, is new IPs. Uh, they, they've been holding on to a lot of the older franchises, the few that they have. And it's good to see them coming out with something new, something that looks entertaining and engaging. So they announced this game, Recall. Uh, and what this looks like is a Pixar movie, in a sense. The way the game looks, uh, as far as the visual aesthetic, it reminds me of um, movies like WALL-E. It just look like a dystopian future you're you're the main character is this young female and uh you have this robot with you uh that looks like a dog at the beginning of this trailer and uh, you notice that inside the dog there's a circular core and uh enemies robotic enemies approach you and they try to kill you you fight them you know matrix style then your dog goes to fight for you and your dog does this kind of super move where it kills itself to destroy them and the center of the dog, the core, falls out of the dog and you take that core out and you put it inside another robot, which happens to be an empty vessel for this core. And the robot wakes up and it's a giant robot which now has the spirit of your dog inside of it. So the trailer ends with uh, what looks like the main character, like six or seven different robots that all have the ability for you to transfer that core. So I, I think the whole idea is good. Uh, I think it's great to see Microsoft working on new IPs. And uh, I think that that was a great new direction for Microsoft as well. They gave it a spring 2016 release window, so that's when you guys can expect ReCore. Moving on to probably the biggest Microsoft uh, show. They showed Fallout 4. Now we did see Fallout 4 a week prior, before E3. Uh, Bethesda did announce it, and uh, they showed it. Uh, but they showed Fallout 4 for the Xbox One. They kind of delved deep into the story. They showed some new aspects of the game. And then they dropped the major bomb, Big Bomb. They dropped this bomb on, on the world that Fallout 4 for the Xbox One will be able to play every single PC mod. And so when I heard that, I was like, oh man, you can't be serious. And if you guys know my reaction videos, you know I was losing my mind. Uh, the fact that Fallout 4 for the Xbox One is able to play mods, I think that's an amazing thing. I think the mod world is very important to gaming, especially as a person who never really was into PC gaming. And then when that window was open, I was able to see all the things you could do with Skyrim and Minecraft, all these crazy mods. Uh, that's another thing, Microsoft. Bring that uh, Minecraft mods to the Xbox One, too. Uh, but yeah, that alone made me tell my wife we got to get Fallout 4 on the Xbox One just for the mod. So they dropped another bomb, Microsoft knocking the ball out of the park during E3 this year. Moving on, Microsoft announced Plants vs. Uh, Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Now, I don't know if you guys ever played the original Garden Warfare, but I have it. I have it on PlayStation 4. And I, I spent very limited time 
very limited time playing it uh, because I, I didn't know anyone in the community and I was playing other games. But for the little bit of time I did play it, it seemed really fun. Uh, this sequel to the original Plants vs. Zombies has you take the role of the zombies and now you are this endearing zombie uh, race of, of enemy, I guess friend now. And the plants are the ones on the offensive in this game. So you're actually defending territories against plants. So they've really gone 180, and now now the plants aren't the, the peaceful ones. They're actually trying to take over and kill the, the zombies. They showed lots of different uh, classes and new abilities in the game. It looks really fun. I'm looking forward to playing it because I pretty much play everything now. Uh, and uh, yeah, Plants vs. Zombies, something new for the Xbox. Uh, it was announced at Xbox E3 conference, and I'm looking forward to playing it. Microsoft shook up the world with this announcement at their E3 conference, and uh, I was just as shocked as you. Uh, they announced that the Xbox One is going to be able to play backwards compatible games, discs, and d downloaded content. So you're going to be able to take your old Xbox 360 games, stick them inside your Xbox One, and play them. Now this is a time thing, so it is not available as of right now, but they say in the next few months they're going to be ushering in. I think they have a list of 100 games starting off, and then as time progresses, they're going to uh, allow you to just stick your games in and play your old 360 library, which is really cool. They did uh, emphasize one thing that kind of drove the stake home to Sony. They said, we're not going to charge you to play games you already own. And uh, I think that was a little shot at PlayStation Now. And uh, for Microsoft, that's a really good thing. I'm happy to hear there's backwards compatibility. That seems like there was something that... That's something that has been lacking in the last few generations. Uh, they don't want you to play your old stuff. They want you to buy your new stuff and your old stuff sits to the wayside. And as a collector, I think it's a really great thing to have uh, backwards compatibility. Microsoft continue with Forza Motorsport. Uh, Forza looks phenomenal. Uh, I guess for people who play uh, racing sims, you guys already know about the Forza brand. I personally am not really big into any sims. I don't get racing sims, uh, the sims. I don't play anything like that. <laughs> but uh, I never really got into Forza. Uh, it looks phenomenal to me. I never got into Gran Turismo. I never really got into those types of games. But they sell tons every year. And uh, it's going to sell again at the end of this year. It looks like a great game. And if you're really into that, good thing. And if not, you can keep moving. But it's still a great announcement at E3 that they're going to have another Forza available before the end of the year. Another game that they announced at Microsoft's E3 that's going to be uh, slated, slated for a 2016 release is Dark Souls 3. Now, I own the original Dark Souls 1 and 2, I own Demon Souls, and I never really got into them. I never got a chance to really flesh them out and play them because at the time that I got them, I was playing other things. And then when I jumped into the world and started to realize just how unforgiving it was, I was like, no, I'm not going to play this right now. I'm going to play something else. And uh, one game that changed the whole paradigm of that was uh, uh, Bloodborne for the PlayStation 4. I played Bloodborne, my wife played Bloodborne, we beat it together, it was an amazing game. And uh, I kind of understand now how you're supposed to play these types of games. So I'm really looking forward to this. It was a really nice uh, CG trailer that they showed uh, for uh, Dark Souls 3 for the Xbox One. And like I said, it's slated for a 2016 release, so I'm looking forward to it. When it comes, I'll, I'll definitely have it. I don't know which console I'm going to get it for, but it's a great announcement that Microsoft made at the E3 conference. And man, let me just say this. Microsoft hit the ball out of the park. They kept hammering home games. They didn't talk about... TV. They didn't talk about the Kinect. They didn't talk about anything other than video games. They didn't give you a chance to breathe, and it was really, really good. The next game that Microsoft revealed, re-revealed, was The Division. Now, it's been a long time since anyone saw actual footage of this game. Uh, we saw the early trailers, like, two years ago, and uh, it was an amazing thing to see. This team-centered New York experience where you and your buddies get together and you go take out other teams uh, and you steal loot, you take over territories. It looked really phenomenal. The, sh the footage that they showed, I almost pooped myself. I say poop because I have kids, but I almost pooped myself <laughs> when I saw it. It looked really phenomenal. A lot of people were talking about the game got a graphics downgrade. I didn't really see that. I saw what looked like a phenomenal looking game. I love this, the team-centric uh, action. You could hear the actual people playing this young lady and the guys that were talking to each other and coordinating and someone walked up from behind her, they turned around and pulled their guns on them. the guy said, okay, we're going to be nice. It was just really fun. And I like games like that. I'm really into games like uh, The Last of Us, which is four versus four. Very team-centered. you got to have a microphone. It seems like The Division is taking that in a whole new direction and it looks really exciting. So I guess people who like Destiny are really probably going to like The Division. It seems like that type of world but just not in space. Uh, it's right at home where you can relate and it looks like it's gonna be a hell of a good time so it was a really good announcement for Xbox 
I think that they really got a lot of people excited with the division news, and it got me excited, and they probably got you excited. Tom Clancy was not done with the, just the division. He wasn't satisfied. His company said, we got to show something else for Microsoft. So they announced Rainbow Six Siege, or they showed more footage of this game. Uh, and uh, this is another one of those games. It's a five versus five experience. You're holding a, a certain area, territory, you, and one team is trying to save a hostage, the other is trying to hold a hostage. And uh, it's fucking insane. Just let me say that. It looks really beautiful. Uh, the, the way that you're able to interact with the environment, everything is destructible. You can go through ceilings and floors and through walls. Headshots seem to be headshots that kill a person with one shot. It looks phenomenal. And uh, this is another game that a lot of people are super excited about, and I'm excited about it. And Rainbow Six Siege comes with Rainbow Six uh, Vegas 1 and 2 for the Xbox One. 1 and 2. So that is another huge perk for people um, who love Rainbow Six, who have the old Rainbow Six games, or who never got a chance to play them. It's a huge new perk that you get with Rainbow Six Siege. And I'm looking forward to this. I really am. Uh, I just, since they announced it, since they showed us what this game looks like and what it's all about, it's just been at the, the forefront of my gaming mind. And it was another huge hit for Microsoft. The next thing that Microsoft announced was a game called Gigantic, which is a cell shaded open world, beautiful world. It's not a human world. You're, you're deities. It looks like you're things like uh, eagles and foxes and things like that. And uh, you run around this world, you're able to summon. You're able to summon uh, what's called uh, guardians, and I'm not talking about destiny. They're like giant gods almost, they're huge. And they come out of the ground when you summon them and they go and fight for you. Now, I'm, I'm not too sure exactly what the whole dynamic of this game is, whether it's online only, whether it's a campaign, whether it's a com competitive modes, and whether it's uh, cooperative modes. It just looks like a lot of fun. And I'm really happy to see Microsoft stepping away from their comfort zone. That's the thing that, that you've got to respect them for. They're stepping away from the games that they know people want to see, and they're trying something else. And I think it's going to pay off for them big time. Gigantic looks really fun. It's going to have a beta available in August of this year, so look forward to that. Microsoft showcased their new application called ID at Xbox, which is their new hub for independent games. And they showed off four new indies that look pretty interesting. They only showed them real briefly, so I can't really go into too much detail. The names of the four games are Cuphead, Tacoma, Ashen, and Beyond Eyes. And uh, they did look pretty interesting, especially this one. It looks like a 1930s cartoon. It really looked, it really does. It looked really amazing, and uh, I'm just anxious to see what it is. And that's just another sign of Microsoft's change from the place that they were to the place they are now. They got all these new IPs. They're showing nothing but great games during this E3 con uh, conference. And I was really happy to see it. I mean, after what's happened over the last two years with E3 with Microsoft, they put kind of a bad taste in your mouth two years ago. And for them to come from there to where they are today, where all I, I have nothing to praise for what they've shown so far. And it's not even over yet. So let's continue on with the games. They showed a new partnership with the developers of the game DayZ. I mean, a lot of people in the PC world and the mod world know what DayZ is. Uh, and in this game, they didn't really explain too much about what it's going to be, but the name of the game is Ion. And apparently in this game, you're going to be able to switch bodies with other characters in the world. Uh, I'm guessing in a later date, they're going to uh, flesh out more about what this game truly is. And I'm hoping it's good. You know, DayZ is, I guess, it carved out its own niche, and I don't know if uh, the developers of that game can just make something else that's going to be just as engrossing and exciting. But I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm happy to see Microsoft is opening up the door to change, opening up the door to new things and new possibilities. The game that Microsoft showed, well, one of the games that Microsoft showed that really had me screwed up, is Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is this timed Xbox One exclusive that is totally beautiful. Uh, and I never really knew how beautiful it was until they, Microsoft showed us in E3. Uh, and I thought it was going to look really similar to the original, but it does not. Rise of the Tomb Raider is, quite frankly, graphically, definitely the best game I've seen on the Xbox One. It is stunning. Uh, I think that uh, Square is going against Naughty Dog uh, for kudos against uh, against Uncharted. This game looks like it could definitely be a contender to go against Uncharted. Uh, it showed this really awesome cliffhanging scene with Laura Croft and some dude. It's a black dude, he had a beard. I don't know, his name could have been Beast of the Gamer. But the way that this, this action played out was so visceral and so amazing. And to, to actually have that in your hands and control it, I can only imagine what it feels like. 
I'm looking forward to this. I'm really happy that Microsoft is able to procure this game for a timed exclusivity deal. Uh, and, and I think that's going to be something that's going to happen from time to time. That these uh, huge companies are going to be able to pay a little extra to hold on to a, uh, an IP for a little bit longer or get some exclusive deals. And that seems like that's just the way it is right now. But I was really happy to see this. Uh, Tomb Raider looked really, really amazing. Uh, Laura Croft's animation, that world, the snow, everything that it looked like a real movie. It looked really beautiful. And I'm looking forward to playing that for sure when it comes out on the Xbox One. I'll have that day one. Everybody's been amped about this new Rare, Rare deal. Now we all know what Rare is. If you're old like I am, you remember Rare back in their heyday when they first came out with Donkey Kong Country 1. They ended up making games like Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and uh, they have come together. And it's not what everybody thought it was going to be, but it actually might be better than what we thought it was going to be. Everybody was thinking that they were going to come together and rehash an old franchise or bring out something new. They have created this 30th anniversary Rare collection for the Xbox One. And this is probably going to be one of my favorite things on the Xbox One, to be quite honest. You get 30 games, 30 full-fledged games. And they're going to be um, true to their original form. And uh, they might have, I, I don't know, they didn't really specify if they're going to graphically be superior. I'm sure that they probably will. They probably won't have frame rate, rate hiccups. I'm hoping that they are able to work that out. But some of the big hitters in this 30 game collection are Battletoads, Conquer's Bad for a Day, a little smart ass squirrel, uh, Banjo Kazooie, and those are probably the biggest three that I could think of uh, in this collection. But Rare is a really phenomenal developer, or at least they used to be before they just jumped on this Connect bandwagon that Microsoft put them on. I'm happy to see Microsoft is letting them play, letting them do what they want to do, and uh, hopefully uh, their new IP that they're making is going to be just as important to our, fu our future as their games from the past. And uh, that was just another great thing to see Microsoft do. Uh, just release some great games for the new audience. These young kids have no idea what Rare is, what Rare was. A lot of people now, 18, 19 years old, think Rare is just Killer Instinct. They're a lot more than Killer Instinct. I'm really happy now that a lot of people get a chance to reach back in time and play some of the games that made them great. Another game that Microsoft announced is called Sea of Thieves, which is this pirate game that looked really amazing to me. You're on ships, you're in the ocean, you're going against other pirates, you got a team, it looks like there's people doing different things on the ship to keep you moving, to keep the people alive. You can see people on the mast and people turning the wheels. And then out in the ocean you see this giant war going on and you're going against other pirates. Um, I love pirates, I love that whole genre, I love the movies, Pirates of the Caribbean. This seems like the first game that's actually going to allow you to do all that stuff. And it's exclusive to Xbox One and it's slated for a holiday release of 2016. Uh, I'm definitely going to be picking up Sea of Thieves. I love this type of action. Uh, it's over the top, but it seems like there's so, something for everybody to do. And uh, again, that's Microsoft stepping away from their comfort zone and trying something new. And I give you nothing but thumbs up for that. Fable Legends. For the people out there like myself who enjoyed the original Fable, uh, Fable Legends... When they showed this trailer at E3, Microsoft's uh, E3 press conference, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was something like a Dragon Age type of experience. Of course, it is in the same genre, but graphically, it's so close and so clean. I had no idea what it was. Fable Legends is slated to be released in 2015 holiday, so it's right around the corner. It's right here, and it's free to play. That's the thing a lot of people don't know. It's a free-to-play game, and it just makes Microsoft look that much better. And I'm really happy to see it. I'm going to be happy to play it. I'm going to be anxious to see where these microtransactions come in. Uh, but yeah, Microsoft doing their thing, and uh, they've been doing nothing but hard-hitting this entire E3. Gears of War 4 was announced at E3 this year. Uh, it's called Gears 4, but I'm thinking that the that's just the E3 title. I'm sure it'll be called Gears of War 4. They showed a new protagonist. They showed a young female with them. In this world, it didn't seem as Gears of War as some of the other games. Uh, there wasn't just hordes of enemies. It seemed more uh, claustrophobic. It seemed more scary, I'd say. I mean, there was an enemy that you were chasing. Finally, once you got to where he was, then the game opened up and it turned into Gears of War. Graphically, it looks phenomenal. I was looking at the uh, effects of the, the trees blowing in the wind and the rain coming down. I was like, holy shit, this is really an amazing looking game. I think this game is graphically almost on par with uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It looks fucking phenomenal. And uh, I'm happy to see it, especially for people now in this new generation who are just coming of age who never really got a chance to play the old Gears of War. Uh, this is a great thing to get. And not only that, Microsoft also announced the Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Uh, 
which will be coming out August 25th. And it has um, Gears of War, the original Gears of War. It'll be running at 1080p, 60 frames per second. And I think it's just one game. So I don't know what kind of price point they're going to be aiming for. I'm thinking maybe 20 bucks, just to get people kind of in the mode of what Gears of War used to be. But I think that that's, that's how they ended it. They ended it with Gears of War. Uh, I think overall, Microsoft did a fantastic job. Uh, I can't remember the last E3 where Microsoft did so well for me. Uh, at the end of it, I looked at my wife, I looked at you know my kids, I said, I don't know how Sony's going to be able to, to, to beat this. They've had all these great games. They showed Team Raider, they showed Gears of War, they showed free-to-play stuff, they showed indie stuff. Uh, it was just really, really amazing. And um, They showed Halo Guardians, they showed multiplayer, they showed all these new IPs, they showed Gigantic, they showed, I mean, but they just, it was non-stop, it really was non-stop. And uh, I'm very proud of Microsoft. I'm very proud to be an Xbox One owner and an Xbox 360 owner. And uh, their their conference, I'm going to give it a score of an A. Uh, I can't go any lower than an A. I can't. I, I mean, I gave Bethesda a B plus, and I know that Microsoft killed them. Maybe my, my expectations were just too high. Maybe I should have gave Bethesda a D because Microsoft really killed it, and they deserve that A. And uh, Microsoft, you guys did an excellent job with your E3 conference. I look forward to these new great games. You guys let me know in the comments below what game announcement at E3 for Microsoft was your biggest news. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you guys for all the love and support. Keep throwing those thumbs up. It really means a lot for the channel. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.